and afternoon. It's Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific. Welcome all. I'm Kane, and I'm joined with David, better known as the Workday Sharing Guy. Also joining us is Denise, Logan, and lots of special guests today. Welcome to the Sharing Show. Thanks so much, Kane. Can you please tell us a little bit more about Zoom? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're using Zoom and you have the ability to click on the chat button down there and interact with all of us on the show today. And we really uh, encourage you to do this and make sure when you do, you select to send your messages to everyone, all attendees or panelists. And also a quick reminder at, at the end of this show, we will be having another um, post-show open mic session that starts uh, right as this show finishes. So now I'm ready to pass over to you, Denise, for our first Kahoot. Thank you, Kane. Uh, let's everybody go open Kahoot.it in a browser and we will get started with our first Kahoot this morning. It's our survey Kahoot and we have, I think, three questions this morning if we get started. Denise, it's asking me for a pin. Okay, we'll see what our pin is in just a moment. Seven seven nine, and again, just open a browser with kahoot.it. Put in the pin number and your name or a nickname. That pin number again: eighty nine forty seven seventy nine. There's no right or wrong answer, just whatever situation. What time zone are you in? Eastern, Central or Mountain, Pacific or Other? In the past shows, we would say, are, or are you outside the U.S.? But of course, there's Hawaii as well. So um, I'm curious to see how many are green today. Only one screen, David. Aloha, green person. What is the approximate size of your company? Under a thousand, a thousand to four thousand, four thousand to nine thousand, or over nine thousand? Uh, this is again one we did in an earlier airing of the sharing show, and a lot of people were thinking where we got this from. there. How do you use position management or do you use it? Yes, it's smooth, we close positions. Yes, it's smooth, we leave positions open. Yes, but it's not smooth or green is none of the above. Maybe you use job management only or you use position management and maybe once they store them smooth, I'm not sure. Okay, it's Kind of a close tie between those that are smooth and those that don't use it or not smooth. It should make for very interesting uh, post-show open mic sessions after today's show. Um, okay, I do see in the chat that the music is loud, but we're off music here for a bit. What's next on the agenda? Up next, we have David, the Workday Sharing Guy. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go quickly through my disclaimer because we have several guests focusing uh, practically everyone here on position management. So we are all Workday customers. We are sharing with each other. None of us represent our companies. We're all representing ourselves, our own opinions. We are sharing with each other. Um, so share um are not, um, um, you know, are not, share and the sharing show is not training. This is all knowledge sharing. Um, I highly recommend the Workday training. Uh, I forgot to say one thing. So I'm no longer an active Workday employee, right? I, I was employee 149 uh, almost 12 years ago, 11 and a half years ago. Last, um, last airing of the sharing show, we announced the first European share -thon. The date's right here, um, 18, 19 of June. That's a Tuesday, Wednesday in Prague. If you go to the community and you search for Prague and then share I'm sure you'll find it. 
There's a registration page there. Last week, we also started our Charity of the Week with uh, Movember. I'm captain of the Workday Alumni Customers and Friends Movember team. It's half a year away, so I'm starting to recruit anyone interested. It's a co-ed team. Last year, we had 31 members and more females and males on our team. And there's a picture there of an aerial view of a lunchtime walk that I did of a mustache, the final day of every month up between now and November. And so this week, Charity of the Week is Parkinson Voice Project. That's because last weekend I was in Dallas and that's myself and my mom and some friends at the Talk Walk in Dallas. David, why was the Talk Walk for Star Wars themed? Oh, this is because this happened on the 4th of May. It was a Saturday. And so the t-shirt says Talk Walk in Star Wars theme because it was a celebrating May the 4th be with you. What we do is we walk through them all. They have different challenges, which is something I'm interested in, of course. It's all to raise awareness of Parkinson's disease. And in particular, the Parkinson's Voice Project, it's a nonprofit and it doesn't charge any, no charge for any of the patients for the speech therapy services. Uh, the concept here is um, scrambled in these words, the way in which um, the Parkinson's Voice Project's approach is able to, to be a nonprofit um, so this might come up later in the show. Those are the letters, again, for those who have photographic memory. This is a picture of the talk walk a year prior. Um, we know approximately how many people show in this year. I don't have the picture yet from this year. Last year was a purple shirt. We gave out over 900 shirts. So that's how we know how many people were there. And that's kind of a good theme for us as we think about um, how many people might be going to Rising wearing a t-shirt that says the word share on the front of it. There's a little yellow box of myself and my mom. And the day before, on May the 3rd, we had a share -thon in Dallas. I didn't get an okay from everyone to show their face. So essentially, I, I had lunch with a baker's dozen of Logan's. You could be here next week. Every week, we want to highlight some nonprofit. If you work for a nonprofit that's a Workday customer, that's great. If not, contact us either way. And um, we will highlight one nonprofit every week, as long as we get you guys participating in that. This is showing last week something I did on fully indexed reports. Just make sure everyone knows that when you choose a data source, such as find candidates, by default, fully indexed report is on. And you see that at the bottom of this picture. This is somewhat important because it'll come back later in the show. In the filter on that report, if you search for name, you only see yellow, you only see the three yellow fields, first name, full name, and last name. Those are yellow text fields. If you take off the fully indexed report, then you search for name, there's actually 19 different fields that have the word name in it. They're just not all indexed anymore. I wanted to make sure I removed that confusion for people. Another thing that might come up later in the show is a challenge question I asked, one of my Workday Way challenge questions, number 10 it was, is what happens if a true false value is blank or if you put in the filter that you want to check, is it blank? So again, TF, the icon isn't as nice, I don't think, as it used to be, a very large TF. But if you look closely, you'll see which fields are true false fields. And you could check if it's blank or my challenge question is, are these things actually the same? Do you say equals to blank? Is that the same as saying is blank? And one way in which to test it is just, Go ahead and write a report, check if somebody, write a, a report on workers and is the worker terminated? Well, you could check if that's blank and then go into your report. This is one of the interesting things about the Boolean logic, the Workday's approach to it. What if you say show no when false? This is Smorgan here, who is somewhat uh, related to Logan. Logan reports up to Smorgan. And um, you see in the report here, uh, workers terminate is no. So what would happen if you did a filter on is it blank? Again, that will come up later in the show. What's next on the agenda? Up next, we have special guest Bryn from Arizona with, uh, nope, really up next, we have position management challenges with a guest who is unfortunately unable to be with us today. So we're gonna move past this and go to our next chair. So now we do have Bryn with our next chair on position management. 
Thank you, Denise. I'm going to talk about how we use position management. We have a number of reasons why and a number of ways that we use it. Some of those things that drive our decisioning to go with position management was the fact that we have a lot of workday modules and we want to have continuity between those modules and the way that we need to to report on them. We are a company that has a lot of audit going on, both regulatory and from our owners and our customers, and we need to have a lot of history around what we do and how we perform with positions and people hold positions and a lot of accountability that we have to show around those. Uh, we've been live on HCM recruiting benefits, time, absence, and payroll for a little bit over a year, and we included advanced comp and talent management around summertime last year, I do help support all of those areas, including the creation and management of our positions. We also use a, a tool called Adaptive Insights. We have been using that for many years. And if anybody was at Workday Rising uh, this past time, you know that it's now becoming a part of Workday. There's a lot of integrations that are getting rolled out, but we had to come up with some way to feed between the two before all of that started taking place. We use adaptive insights in support of our annual operating plan, which is similar to a budget. Uh, and we also use it to show monthly and quarterly performance to plan. When we look at all of that and our business reasons, one of our key, key drivers around the use of position management is that Workday Adaptive Feed that we've created. Some of you may have seen me present on that in a previous share -thon. We do need to know the history of positions and we also have some position restrictions, additional data that we have on our positions around product initiative, budget year, budget number, and budget justification. And we need those to continue forward regardless of who's holding a position. So even if somebody leaves and somebody else is a replacement, we still want that same information about when that position was budgeted, why it was budgeted. Um, we have different budget numbers throughout the course of a year. There's one for AOP. There's one if we have a special initiative where we're bringing a lot of people on board. So we need to have that information for our planning purposes. We also then, when we look at replacement workers versus net new workers, we look at that from both trending with using worker trending and also for some external trending that we do. We have a driver around mobility. And then we use plan view in our EPMO for our project planning. And we do have uh, currently a bit of a manual integration and soon to have a automated one where we are showing a position when it's created at the time of that budget process, and then the person who's filling it, and we're forecasting all of that. And then if somebody leaves and we have a replacement for them, we want that same forecast to continue forward. So position management allows us to do that. When we look at that feed, there's some key pieces here. As you can see from bullet number one, this is the same position, but it's been in two different organizations within the company. It's had two different employees. Ellen was first and then Christina. It's had the same job profile as you can see in bullet three in the same position ID. What's interesting is when you then look at bullets five. So you can see where Ellen had started back in 2009 before we were even on Workday and left the, comp the position. Um, and the company earlier this year. And then three months later, Christina was hired into that exact same position. So when we look at forecasting Ellen's work, when we look at trend analysis, we can see all of this happening fairly easily within a single report. We're also able to see what requisition was used to fill the position with Christina and the fact that it became open for termination and was a replacement for Ellen. So as we look at that, position over time, we're able to report on, and we're able to adapt it for Henning, and that way we're able to get an accurate account of position versus person. When we look at the trending, we're able to see this first example here with the customer services specialist. That is a position that we do expect to see a lot of turnover. It's in a very stressful call center. And of course, you tend to see people coming in and out of the position, more contract workers. So we expect that. 
when we look at the bottom example where there's a quality control analyst and software engineer for the same position, we've repurposed that position, but it's also one we don't expect to see a lot of turnover during the course of a year. So that's a red flag for us. What may be going on there that caused all of that turnover? We then also are able to look at some other fields, and these all come from that same feed report around engagement duration. And as I said earlier, that's one of those additional elements that we've added onto the position. And we're able to say we've budgeted this position for eight months. If somebody comes in, we're able to say, okay, they only use maybe three months of that. We then know we've only got five months left for the next person. And we're able to look at how accurate we've been based on our forecast, whether we need to increase budget, we're able to gain something back on the budget. And we're able to look at all of that based on how long each individual person's been in that position for trending purposes. So that's all of where it works well for us and how we use it. There are, of course, some places doesn't work as well. And most of that is around repurposing a position. We open positions during our budget cycle. A lot of times, by the time we get to actually wanting to staff that position, we've changed the need for it. Our corporate goals have changed. You cannot edit a position while somebody's in it. So if we want to repurpose that or we've got a rec, we actually have to close out a rec, you know, unfill that position. Or if somebody's in it, we need to open a brand new position if they're going to have a different job and close the existing one after they're in the new one. So we do have to do that as a bit of a manual process. Same thing when we convert. We have a number of instances where we've got contingent workers who become employees. And there again, while somebody's holding a position, you cannot edit the position. So we do then have to create a new position that is an employee position. We terminate the contingent worker from their existing position and hire them into the new one. We do have it set up though so that their account number stays the same. So we have the history between the two. But from a position management standpoint, we do need to create a new position. We usually close the old one when we're converting them. That's where we do have to do things a little bit manually. Otherwise, everything feeds through, feeds through to adaptive, feeds through to plan view and some of our reporting. And those are the reasons we've gone with position management. And that's my share. Thank you, Bren, for the share. Um, I can imagine there'll be several uh, questions and comments for you in the chat. We have several guests who are going to move forward, but I'm actually going to move backwards just because last week we did show this slide and I believe that you confirmed, but just so everyone can hear, Ellen and Christina, there's Ellen and it's ch change over to Christina, all capital. And in the very first airing of the sharing show, um, 10 weeks ago, this is episode 11, Mike explained in a boomerang this exact issue of having all capital letter names coming from a resume scan. Is that, is that what we're seeing here? Christina came in from a resume scan? Yes, it is. Christina, with a resume scan, we also do have individuals, depending on where they're from in the country, they may enter their name in all caps on their application or even an all in lowercase. We do not have a boomerang in place for that. We're not worried about it within Workday itself, but we do correct it a lot of times with some of our downstream integrations. Okay. Thank you, Brent, for bringing that up, um, that you know, boomerang is a theme that we have ongoing and there'll be more boomerangs also in this, um, in this airing that, so let's go ahead and move forward. Thank you again, Bren, for share, for your You're share. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, up next we have an ask with Chris from California. Hi everyone. Um, first of all, Bren, thank you very much for your share. Um, it's definitely true from your uh, presentation that position management does have a lot of benefits to it. Um, what I'm kind of curious is, you know, how how does position management work as it relates to coordinating with all of the different parties? You know, um, at the companies that I've been, we've always closed the position whenever um, somebody leaves or if somebody transfers from one group to another, we, you know, let them keep the position. So that's what I'm used to seeing. And so what I would love to be able to find out from folks is, you know, how do you um, work with other teams to do the coordination so that if somebody 
transfers from one position to another, how do we um, educate the managers on how um, that process should work? How do we um, coordinate with the recruiting team to make sure that as folks leave the company and uh, there's a backfill that, you know, the HR operations team is getting the correct data if we don't have an integration from our recruiting system to Workday. So my ask for everyone today is to truly understand how, how does position management work in the true Workday sense and how have you guys made it work so that it's smoothly? Um, because the um, poll at the beginning of the presentation um, indicated that, you know, there's some of you that have done a great job with it and everything is smooth where some of you guys have done it and it's not so smooth. And here at my company, we would love to get to the part where it does run smooth. And so any um, information or um, any thoughts or comments you guys have would be greatly appreciated. Okay, thank you, Chris. This, uh, we've had this slide up here um, for uh, a couple of previous airings and that's why we've been getting feedback from people. And we have, Chris, are you gonna be able to join us for the, the, the Post show open mic? Yes, I definitely will. Okay, so people, if you put into the chat anything for Chris, that would be helpful. And Bren, I think, is a maybe for the post show. So um, they'll be watching the chat as we move forward. Uh, thank you, Chris, for your ask. You're, essentially, what I want to say is your ask has turned into a share. You know, from your one simple LinkedIn message to me that has most of this text here. <laughs> Um, it's turned into a topic for us for um, you know a few consecutive areas. Awesome, thanks, David. Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Up next, we have another ask with Satya from New York. Hi, my name is Satya. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to ask, and uh, this uh, sharing show has been awesome. I, I've been learning a lot, and uh, I just want to ask about uh, the boomerang integration. I've heard on this show, so I thought probably we could use for some of this uh, one of the solutions that we are solutioning for. So currently, um, when an, when associates are being hired uh, and their managers or somebody is moving under a manager. Um, uh, who is not a manager at this point, um, when HR is doing this job changes or uh, new hires, they open up, they have to open up a help desk ticket, fill in a spreadsheet, which we have it on the internet. So they have to put in the name of the organization, their associate ID, effective date, who they roll up to. And we have both position management and job management together for different organizations. So they have to mention that. And, um, we want to see if we could use all this information by, if you can move to the next slide, David. Um, the, I mean, what we want to do is have a questionnaire as a part of the new hire or change job and gather all that information that is being provided in that questionnaire and pass that information to the as a report or something to this boomerang integration that I've heard about, which is, um, seems to be a solution. So, and once it takes all that information, calls the service to create a supervisory org and there automatically proceeds to the next step. Um, that's all, um, that's what we are looking for. And I've seen several people posting and I've seen that Michael said they have a solution. So I'm definitely interested in knowing more. I'm new to a day studio. Um, so I'm, I'm technical, but I'm new to a day studio. So I definitely wanted to uh, try some of these um, boomerang integrations in our company. Okay, thank so you. thank you. Thank you, Satya, for your, for your share. And is, is this also an ask? So essentially, you, you know the concept, concepts of boomerang, you're, and you're moving forward or interested in uh, putting together a boomerang integration is that yes that, i wanted that. to know how to use the boomerang integration that's my ask actually so i know from he hearing from the show i heard that it's possible so i want to know how to do it okay all right this is fantastic the show is working um i will get back to you on that boomerang it will come around again and now we have a share that addresses an, your ask so welcome michael from oregon Good morning, everyone. Thank you. All right. So yeah, so to directly address that, um, you know, we've automated the creation of boomerangs uh, during the hire and promotion business processes. Um, so just a couple of quick things here. Uh, so what I'm going to discuss, you know, there's no warranty. 
you know, or anything like that. And, you know, if you do decide to do this, please make sure you verify all of that in your sandbox before doing anything production wise. Um, and also, you know, sharing this with everyone, um, just as a member of the community, not representing Workday, my company or any, any clients. So, you know, what we did, we ran into much the same issue, right? We had a high ticket volume, um, especially during our heavy ramp periods uh, for new hires and promotions. Um, so what I did, I used a couple of custom reports and a studio project to create the boomerang. So what we do is we call the integration as part of the hire or promotion business process that change job. Uh, and then after that happens after the completion, so all of the kind of the uh, different attributes are set. So we start out, we get that, get the report information for that manager. Uh, we transform that and then using the API, we create the shell supervisory organization. Uh, once the organization is created, then we come back and we get the information for that supervisory organization back and run another report to pull information about the manager and some different pieces. Uh, we then transform that and update the supervisory organization through the API. Uh, and just to set all of the additional um, attributes, uh, use code and name, manager name, uh, things of that nature. Uh, and then we get the position ID for the manager and we write in the security to assign the manager to the supervisory organization, assigning the superior, all of those different pieces um, as we go through this studio configuration. Now, not all of this is necessarily the most optimized or the best way to do this. This was how I knew how to do it at the time. Um, so there's, you know, you could do some different things using the API rather than custom reports. It works those at the top. These are um, kind of the, the data values that we're using. Uh, so we get the employee ID and the worker, the manager ID, and then you know, as I'm sure many of you are familiar, you have to use the WID uh, when you're kind of addressing some of those backend organizations. So we get the supervisory organization WID, uh, the location and the position ID. And then when we go to update, uh, we get the code, the work DID of the organization we just created and the reference ID uh, so that we have all of the information we need for doing the API calls. So as part of that setup for your business processes, uh, we do have an is manager condition rule. So that just kind of looks at, um, you know, is the person that's being hired or promoted, are they in a specific level? Are they in a department or a cost center that needs to be, uh, that needs to have supervisory organizations? Because if it's a manager role, but not necessarily going to have direct reports, then we don't want to go ahead and create that supervisory organization until we need it and we can do that manually. Um, but in general, anytime we're hiring a supervisor in, in uh, our uh, general cost centers, we do go ahead and create them. Baby, lately you've been in my aim I've been reaching out for you and still that's so far away 
Talking through the smoke in the mirror. Crazy how I see you so clear. Crazy how I see you so clear. And how you make me smile. And how you make me smile. Oh, yeah. And how you make me smile. Oh, baby, how you make me smile. Smile more when I see you. Smile less when I miss you. No, I don't wanna be left alone. Oh, no.